I came first place at locals with Kashira, but it's not just any Kashira build, it's Heat Soul Kashira. Now this deck essentially plays as a deck that wants to draw a ton of cards, a lot of hand traps, you're going to be playing with your big monsters, and you're going to be able to OTK your opponents on the crackback just because of how powerful the Kashira monsters are. And yes, I'm going to be showing you guys a combo at the end of the video, so stay tuned till the end to see how these combos work, how you can build these crazy boards and end up winning all your games. So with that being said, thank you guys all for watching, let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so to start things off with the list, we are playing the standard three Fenrir, of course, three Unicorn, and three Rise Heart. You have to be maxing out on these guys. These are the most important cards of your deck. This is how a lot of your combos start. Unicorn, of course, is your one card combo, but Fenrir and Rise Heart, of course, are really important because in tandem, they're really powerful. Rise Heart with any of the spells is really powerful as well. And that's why you want to max out on these ones because this and this are two card combos. This is a one card combo, so very important to be maxing out on them. And then we're playing the one Ogre and the one Scareclaw Cash, and that's that's it for the cash tier monsters and i think these are just the best ratios to play ogre is okay to search and it's a card that you can get off of theosis or get off of a rise heart banish then summon back with a birth it's really powerful in that sense but you don't want to play more than one because it in itself doesn't combo with any of the other cards it's not a combo starter it's a card that you get through your combo right and then same thing with scareclaw cash scareclaw cash is really good in the battle phase of course it's really powerful but it's one of those cards that you want to search as an extender it's not necessarily something you want to start with so that's why we're playing just the one ogre and the one one Scareclaw Cash. I think this is pretty standard for the Cash Tira monsters. And then for the Cash Tira spells, we are, of course, playing three of the Pressured Planet Wraith Soth and one Terraforming, as well as three Theosis and three Birth. This is uh, pretty standard. Again, you want to max out on these because Rise Heart plus Birth is combo, Rise Heart Theosis combo, Fenrir Theosis is combo. Unicorn is a one card combo, but if you're opening Unicorn Theosis or Unicorn Birth, then your combo gets even stronger, right? Because if you open Unicorn with a Birth, then you can search your Theosis and you can keep going. Or if you open this and this, then you can search the Birth, right? So that's that's why it's really powerful to be playing three of everything because you really want to see as much consistency as possible and that's kind of how you do it this is kind of how it gets done right and then lastly for the only trap card we're playing for the cash share traps is the one cash share preparations of course you search this off of ogre you're not playing the big bang anymore you're never really zone locking in this deck that is not what the deck wants to do so for that reason preparations is just a really powerful one of that you can search off of ogre on top of that you can actually just side this out a lot of time if you know you're going second and it's really nice in the mid to late game because it helps you re-establish boards every single time they get broken because while these cards are really powerful and they establish really powerful boards there's no actual protection within these cards so even if your opponent is able to break it with something like a regeki like as simple as a regeki right something like preparation and birth is what helps you re-establish boards over and over and over again and that's why they're so powerful right so the one preparations again this is not a combo card that you want to start with it's a card you always want to search off ogre moving on to the hand traps over here we are playing three shifter the best hand trap in the deck this is one of the very few decks in the format that can actually play shifter and shifter is absolutely detrimental against everything else in the meta so you want to be playing three shifter three ash blossom of course two ghost mourner one bell and three imperm so i want to talk about these ratios the reason we're on two mourner and one bell is because this is the heat soul version and the heat soul version is going to draw a ton of cards now when you're drawing a ton of cards you want to draw your hand traps ideally and the cards you're going to be drawing sometimes you don't want to see doubles of ghost mourner is one of those examples it's a really powerful card but if you play three ghost mourner then you draw multiple of them they don't really do much for you the really nice thing about ghost mourner and bell is if you already open a ghost mourner let's say you're drawing a card you can potentially draw a bell draw an imperm etc etc so that's why heat soul turbo is kind of played this way because you're going to be drawing all of these different hand traps and then i chose to play one call by the grave and two triple tactics talent however even though that like you know this list came first i would say these potentially could be more hand traps the only thing i would say is be careful when you're playing cards like droll or veiler because those cards need to go to the graveyard and if you're opening like veiler plus shifter your veiler is dead essentially right so same thing with droll and lockbird if you open droll plus shifter and you activate shifter then your droll and lockbird is dead so you have to be really careful the really cool thing i like about the level three guys over here is they're all tuners so they help you get access to baron as well which is really powerful so in theory you can play like a second bell and then maybe a third mourner i don't know you guys can kind of test it how you guys want to this was my first time playing the heat soul version and i just thought it was cool but uh yeah i just noticed that honestly if you open the hand traps and you just play the regular cash zero build like that's just really powerful right because this deck is so consistent on its own but speaking of consistency lastly we're playing three pot of prosperity it's really powerful of course in this deck but one thing i noticed and maybe this was just me kind of learning how to play the deck again getting first place with the deck is really nice however it is something that i took as a learning uh, experience for myself and prosperity is really powerful but you have to be careful when you're playing the heat soul engine and prosperity because if you prosperity away the heat soul engine then you can't use it of course and if you don't prosperity the way the heat soul engine then you're kind of stuck because the heat soul engine is quite large so you have to make sure when you open a card like prosperity what line do you want to go for right and that's really just how you want to play this deck you want to make sure you know what you're doing at all times so that you can manage your resources well but other than that this deck is really consistent 
All right, so moving on to the extra deck over here, we are playing the one Shangri Era, the one big guy, the one Dark Arm, the one Draco Sack, which is really important for the Heat Soul combo. So these cards are pretty standard, I would say, in cash, but the uh, Draco Sack, you really need to be playing this because this is how you get to your Heat Soul combo, and I'll explain that in a second. We're playing the one Red Eyes, of course, really powerful in time, the one Harmonizer, this is more so for graveyard decks, as well as the one Zeus, of course, when you're playing all these Ixies monsters, Zeus is really powerful. And then one Baron, of course, it's really easy to make with all the level three tuner hand traps that you guys are playing. If you ever open two Ash, you can use an ash to make a baron which is really nice link spider and link spider is this is all the heat soul stuff right so double link spider the one g golem the one heat soul these are really powerful because essentially how the combo works any two sevens makes draco sack draco sack effect gets two tokens on your side of the field the two tokens go link spider link spider all right and then you can use the two link spiders to make your g golem crystal heart then g golem crystal heart what it does is it revives back a link spider and then you use this and this to go into heat soul any two level sevens will get you more cards essentially so you're not just ending on that but just on a basic level you have these two and then you can have cards extra to make cards like sp little knight or ip mascarena ip mascarena is kind of my go-to because if you're ending on ip mascarena plus draco sack plus heat soul you can essentially use ip plus uh, the draco sack to make an sp also if you're using ip right you can potentially make a card like access code on the crackback because you have something like heat soul and this is kind of how you can have otk right so again the engine is quite large and that's kind of why you have to be very uh, particular when you use prosperity you have to know okay am i getting rid of this engine or am i not getting rid of this engine and then from there is where you kind of make all your plays moving on to the side deck over here we are playing the two panker tops as well as the three lava golem these are really powerful cards going second if you guys watch the vlog or actually just watch the replay on spanko duels where i post all my duels you guys will see lava golem was so clutch for me this won me a match against uh, rika on Avalon. If you're just going on this, and I had talents as well, I used talents to take this, push for a bunch of damage, and then made red eyes, and then gave back the lava golem, so that was enough for game. So it's really powerful. This this card, when you see it, is so insane against so many different decks. This deck doesn't need its normal summon, which is really nice, so that's why three lava golem is so good. Three drone lockbird. I actually sided this in, I think, maybe once. I don't think I saw it. I don't remember seeing it. It was okay, though, but, you know, it's a really powerful card in the meta. I just I just didn't happen to need it. One harpy's feather duster and two lightning storm for backdoor matchups. Three solemn judgment. I sided this in all the time because going first when you know you're going first in games two or games three your opponent a lot of the time is going to be deciding board breakers right evenly match lightning storm right get key all of those cards you will see solemn judgment is very important for that and then one summon limit this was just the 15th card that i was playing i actually never saw this but in theory it's really good in cash terra so yeah i'm only playing the one it's maybe not great in one in theory if you're playing the heat soul version you get a draw card so you can see this you have prosperity to see this as well so that's why the one summon limit is okay this could potentially be another hand trap if you guys want it to be it's really up to you but this was my side deck for the event and it was good enough to get me there all right so while we're here i thought you know what might as well show you guys a quick two card combo so essentially if you open unicorn plus rise heart you can get this combo off unicorn plus fenrir also gets to this combo which is really nice so it's really kind of up to you how you want to play it but both of these work honestly as long as you open two monsters that you can get on the board you can essentially make it because you have a rank seven play right so what you're going to start off by doing is special summoning your unicorn once you special summon unicorn you're going to activate its effect of course to get you to your cash to rebirth now what you can do is you can uh activate your cash to your birth you're not going to use the riser effect to special summon and that's because it's going to lock you into ixie so you don't want to do that what you're going to do is you're just going to normal summon your rise heart you're then going to use this rise heart effect of course because you need an extender you need another body on the board so you're going to banish the fenrir and you're going to see why banishing fenrir is really important but we're just going to banish the fenrir for now okay so we're going to banish this this is now a level seven so what you're going to do now is you're going to overlay these two to make your draco sack and you're going to activate your draco sack by detaching a card sending it to the graveyard in this case it could be rise heart it could also be unicorn honestly it doesn't really matter what it is but let's just say it's unicorn it doesn't really matter which one it is right so we're gonna activate our draco sack get rid of our unicorn which is here in the graveyard get two tokens on our side of the field doesn't matter what the two tokens are because you're gonna make a link spider with the first token and then a link spider with the second token then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use these two link spiders to make your g golem crystal heart crystal heart will then activate to summon back a link spider and then you're going to use these two to make your heat soul so now heat soul is going to be able to draw you a card which is really powerful but what haven't you done yet you have still not used your birth so what you're going to do is you're going to activate your birth now to special summon your fenrir you can then activate your fenrir effect to search your scareclaw kashtira then you can use kashtira to summon itself banishing your unicorn of course you can get this back with your birth later now from here you're going to actually kind of play depending on what your hand looks like right so if your hand is a bunch of hand traps and you feel like 
this is enough disruptions you guys can make like an ip mascarena if your hand doesn't have that many hand traps let's say let's say your hand is a lot of engine right the card you draw heat soul is just more engine you guys can kind of do different things so one thing you guys can do is use these two overlay these two to make a shangri era and then on your opponent's turn in the standby phase you can summon a fenrir and you're kind of playing with like the fenrir with the hand traps if you have that if you don't have hand traps you can use these two link them away and then make your ip and then ip and then draco sack on your opponent's turn can of course then make an sp little knight as another form of disruption so many different ways to do it at, at this point you can actually just keep the fenrir honestly i don't even know why i use the fenrir you can use these two to make your ip mascarena because then at least if you're using these two to make your ip mascarena you can have a fenrir disruption once you have the fenrir disruption you can use ip mascarena of course into your sp little knight another disruption over here and then of course on the crack back here you have birth birth is going to be able to summon unicorn and then let's say like you know you're doing all this you go unicorn effect you search theosis activate theosis summon fenrir and you guys can see how you guys are pushing for a lot of damage here right so this is just a quick combo tutorial to show you guys what you guys can do uh rise heart and unicorn of course is being the most powerful of the combos and it's just something to consider and i think this is like a different version of the deck it is a little bit more susceptible to nibiru however it's just a lot higher of a ceiling because you have access to all the hand traps that you can draw with heat soul which is really nice so that's kind of it for the combo so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on heat soul kashtira it's a deck that i came first place at locals the other day and it's a really powerful deck now that was my first time playing the deck and in my honest opinion it's maybe not just something i was used to because kashtira for me was always a mid-range deck this kind of made it more as a combo deck however it's still really powerful so thank you guys all for watching i hope you guys did enjoy i hope you guys enjoyed the combo as well and if you guys did make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu -Gi -Oh content just like this one we upload seven days a week here on the channel five shorts a week two long videos a week whether it be deck profiles vlogs all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel also if you guys want to see the full duels to my locals i always post them on the spanko duels channel i'll leave a link in the description as well for you guys to check it out so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace